Hello and welcome to Freedom News, the news you can use to help keep Canada free. After the horrendous Islamic terrorist attacks in Sri Lanka on Easter Sunday that killed countless Christians as they were celebrating the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we had to further endure the pain of the empty, hollow, uh, fake and disgusting so-called notes of sympathy from the evilness of those of Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. It was quite refreshing today to have uh, Canada's conservatives stand up in the House of Commons and give their most honest, heartfelt, sincere condolences and actually referring to the fact that it was indeed Christians that were attacked, and even calling out the fact that they were indeed Islamic terrorists that perpetrated this attack, and they were attacked, and they purposely targeted these people because they were Christians. I have a couple of clips for you um, to witness. I hope you find meaning and and uh, the sincerity that I found. Once again, the world has witnessed horrific attacks against Christians because of their faith. On Easter Sunday, Islamic extremists bombed churches and hotels targeting the Christian community in Sri Lanka, brutally murdering more than 250 people and injuring hundreds more. Christians are the most persecuted religious group in the world. They're targeted by Islamic extremists in countries like Pakistan, Iran, and Nigeria, and by communist regimes in China and North Korea. Here in the West, we see a subtle persecution. For example, if you are a Christian in the West and you believe in creation or the teachings of the Bible, be prepared to be mocked and ridiculed by many, including some of your own political leaders. And if you have social beliefs based on your Christian convictions, you might be denied government funding. This is shameful, and as uncomfortable right. as it might make some, it must be called out. It's time we stand up for all religious freedoms. We must lead by example and reject all violence and persecution of people because of their faith and beliefs. Hear, hear, hear. Mr. Speaker, it was with deep sadness that I learned of the attacks on Christians in Sri Lanka that took place one week ago on April 21st, Easter Sunday. In a few short moments, an act of pure evil and hatred took the lives of over 250 women and children and men and injured over 500. In mere seconds, children lost fathers and mothers, parents lost children, and families were shattered. The majority of victims were Sri Lankan nationals, targeted in three hotels and three churches, St. Anthony's Church in Colombo, St. Sebastian Church in Nagumbo and Zion Church in Batakaloa. There is no doubt that the date of the attack was intentional. Easter Sunday is the holiest day of the Christian calendar. And this brought back tragic memories of a similar attack on Christians just three years ago, when on Easter Sunday in 2016, the church community in Lahore, Pakistan was targeted, killing 75 and injuring over 340 and on the Palm Sunday attacks on Coptic Christians in Egypt in 2017. Let us be clear, these victims were targeted because they were Christian. As a Christian myself, seeing the statue of Christ in one of the churches covered in the blood of his followers was indescribably moving. For Jesus, out of love, shed his blood for us so that we might live. Et c'est le dimanche de Pâques. And it was Easter Sunday when this violence occurred, when we celebrate his resurrection and victory over death. It's an example of love that enables Christians to follow the teachings of Jesus, to love and to forgive our enemies and to pray for those who persecute us. Example in love and self-sacrifice that was demonstrated by Ramesh Raju of the Zion Evangelical Church in Badi Kaloa on the morning of April 21st. This 40-year-old father of two gave his life to block the attacker at the church door, protecting over 600 people inside the church. Sadly, the attacker persisted, and the bomb was detonated outside, killing Ramesh 
and 14 children from a Sunday school class, many of whom were the same ages of my own children. In these dark moments, Christians suffering in Sri Lanka can look to God knowing that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. John chapter 15 tells us that Christ told his disciples that they would suffer for their witness. He said, if they persecuted me, they will persecute you. But that does not mean that we should stand by and that does not mean that we should not do all we can to fight those who would attack others simply because of their faith. Mm -hmm. As Canadians, we unequivocally condemn this act of violence and hatred towards Christians and the targeting of religious minorities throughout the world. It was less than two months ago that we stood in this chamber marking the massacre of Muslims in New Zealand. And over this past weekend, we heard again of a heinous and murderous attack on Jews making Passover, marking Passover at a synagogue in California. In the year of a 24-hour news cycle, Mr. Speaker, it is easy to become desensitized to these attacks. We are shocked at the news, at the news footage as it comes in, but soon our attention is lost. Well, Mr. Speaker, it is easy to become desensitized to these attacks. We are shocked at the news footage as it comes in, but soon our attention is lost. Nous ne devons jamais nous habituer. We must never get used to this kind of hatred and violence. We must not forget. Get used to this kind of hatred and violence. We must never forget. Nous devons ensemble. Together, we must resist those who attack others because of their religious beliefs. As Canadians visit our respective places of worship for our various religious festivals and holy occasions, we are reminded of the freedom and safety that we are blessed with here mm -hmm. in Canada. Would that we never take that for granted. On behalf of Canada's Conservatives, I reaffirm our commitment to combat all forms of hatred and injustice and pledge to continue to defend Canada's proud heritage of religious freedom. And through you, Mr. Speaker, to all who are recovering from injuries and loss of loved ones due to these bombings in Sri Lanka, Canadians stand with you and we mourn with you. Merci, Myself, as a Christian here in Canada, I give my condolences to my brothers and sisters in Christ in Sri Lanka, those who have lost loved ones, those that have been injured. I can't imagine what you're going through. All I know is we have hope. This happened to happen on Easter Sunday, the day we celebrate Christ's resurrection from the dead. He conquered death, hell, and the grave. He defeated humanity's biggest enemies. Everything else is a piece of cake. It's all downhill for our enemies after that. And he was first born from the dead so that we who are in him will once again in likeness rise in newness of life. At that great trumpet when he comes back for his church, his bride, our loved ones that have gone on before, those that died in that horrendous Islamic attack, and all others who have died in Christ, they will rise first. And those that are alive and remain shall be caught up. And so we shall ever be with them, with our Lord. That is the hope that we have. Comfort each other with these words. Thank you, and God bless. Well, that's all I have for today. Like if you like, share, comment, and of course, subscribe. And remember, working together, we can help keep Canada free. Thank you, and have a good day.